This is the MIG welder, stands for metal inert gas. It's a welder that runs a wire through uh, welding wire. That's where the metal inert gas comes in. There's a shielding gas that makes for a clean weld. Why do we weld? Well, welding is perhaps the most important function around the shop in the sense that you can put together any shape metal. You can cut things with your, your torch. You can cut things, prepare things on your iron worker or other cutting methods that I've described already. Now, the, in principle, you can take any shapes, put them together in any way you want. So you can get quite complicated and advanced shapes using a welder by putting any kind of metal together. What happens is the, the high current of electricity flows through the wire. We have these primarily the Miller-Matic 200s, 200 amps of current that flow through a tiny wire. When you weld, that melts the metal and fuses it together. How do you do that? What are the main controls here? So first of all, you turn the machine on. Two main settings are power and speed of wire. The speed of the wire is how, how far, how, sorry, how fast the wire comes out, and that determines how much metal deposition you are getting. The slower the metal is, the, the wire is, the more energy you're transferring while not putting down a lot of metal, so you can actually heat the metal and get a deeper penetration. First of all, you turn the machine on. Now there's high and low side on the welder. This is low side, it says 10 to 20 volts, high side 20 to 30. We never really use the low side here. But on the high side, we go from 1 to 6. Setting from 1 to 6. For 6, you can easily weld half-inch metal or even 1-inch metal. On 1, you might want to do 1 eighth inch or very thin metal. And, you can, uh, and on the low side, if you actually have very thin sheet metal or up to welding m blades, like bandsaw blades, you can do that on a low side. The wire speed goes from 0 to 90. Typically, we run somewhere between 50 and 80 on the settings, and that for that you have to get a feeling for it. A couple of things about the nozzle itself. Here's a shielding, gas shielding nozzle. Uh, basically, there's a gas diffuser that takes, that pretty much shoots the gas into the nozzle. So this is the shielding gas. That's the whole word that comes out, the gas comes out of. And this is a, an insulator piece that you screw on and your nozzle. What you want to do, you can put the nozzle up and down as you like, but you want to keep it such that the tip, the welding tip, which is this, it also unscrews, this is replaceable. This wears out after some time. The wire goes through it. The electrical contact between the wire and the whole electrical system happens through the tip right here. So the heat starts happening actually right here. As you're pushing it out, um, the heat comes out. So first of all, the gas is shielding the, the metal as you're welding so that you don't get oxidation and you get a clean weld. What you'll see is a buildup of spatter around the nozzle. To ameliorate that, every so often you have to take a pair of pliers and clean it out. For safety, first of all, wear your welding helmet. We have self-darkening helmets which are activated upon the, the fire, the arc happening. The arc is an intense UV source. It will also burn your skin, so you want to have long-sleeved shirt. Uh, there's spatter that comes off, so you want to have for gloves too for handling hot metal. But the main thing some people may not re realize while you're welding, you're not going to feel it, but it's just like being on a beach, except you can get a burn within minutes because the light is so intense coming out of the, the welder, the, the welding flame. Uh, one thing to mention also is to complete a welding circuit, you have to have a ground. You just pretty much attach the ground to whatever your workpiece is or to a metal table because conduction will, will close the ground circuit with the object that you're welding. I want to show one thing that goes wrong here for us um, from time to time. Because of the humidity, we don't have air conditioning, but a lot of times we do have to exchange the liner. There's inside the, the wire feed nozzle. This is the wire feed, but these rollers 
rolling past one another, sucking the wire in through this long, uh, long hose. There's a wire inside, there's a liner inside and sometimes that gets clogged. In order to, to prevent that, we always use these little sponges, which are doused with a cleaner. So any d dirt or any rust that forms on the, on the wire is trapped here and it does not go inside because what you'll see is you can get the, the liner inside clogged and you will no, no longer be able to feed. With the wire feed mechanism released, straighten out the hose and see what happens when you pull on pull on the wire. It should be relatively easy to pull out. Yeah, it's it's just as I can pull it right out. Not much force. It pulls on the wire. So this is good. Liner is good. 